Hello and welcome to another episode of GoTo Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the performance difference between NVIDIA's uh, GTX 980 Ti and GTX 1080. All right, so before we get started, uh, I've already done an unboxing of this particular card. This is EVGA's uh, GTX 1080 for the win edition, uh, and it replaced my uh, 980 Ti, which was also an EVGA card, uh, but it was just uh, the reference uh, board design with the ACX2 uh, design on it. Uh, now. I want to address first that I realize this isn't quite an apples to apples test because uh, the 980 Ti that I had uh, was based off the, the reference design. There was no uh, overclocking, uh, you know, so it, it's not the super clocked or super super clocked or for the win edition or classified edition. It's just the, the reference version. Uh, the GTX 1080 that I have is the for the win edition, so it comes out of the box overclocked. Um, so to kind of address this uh, with the results that I got, um, I posted all the frequencies uh, that I was able to achieve with overclocks on both uh, the reference 980 Ti and this EVGA for the win edition. Uh, one thing I did want to uh, mention, even though the for the win ed edition of the GTX 1080, uh, even though it is a custom board design, uh, and has uh, more power phases than the reference board design. It really didn't give it any more headroom. In fact, I, I went right up against that 2100 megahertz uh, core clock wall. Just couldn't get anything beyond that. Uh, so one of the major advantages to the For the Win edition is that it, it boosted to over two gigahertz out of the box. No problem. Um, I didn't have to touch a single thing. Uh, and the fans with the ACX 3.0 uh, that EVGA has on this particular card are whisper quiet. Uh, the fans don't even turn on until they hit 60 degrees Celsius. And yeah, uh, and because it's a bigger card, uh, because of the custom PCB, uh, they were able to fit bigger fans on there, which helped to keep the noise down and the cooling optimized. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to get that kind of out of the way before we get started. So the uh, the test system that we'll be using is actually uh, my wife's grandpa's computer. Uh, I was actually building at the time that I was doing these benchmarks and it was uh, open and easy to switch out cards. Uh, so that's what I used. Uh, so you can see the video of the build here. And uh, it specs, uh, again, as a reminder, it was using the Asus, uh, let's see, I have it right here. The X99M WS um, and the Intel i7-5820K processor uh, overclocked to 4 gigahertz and uh, we were using a Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200 uh, megahertz RAM in quad channel. Uh, so 32 gigabytes of that. So I did a few different types of benchmarks. I did uh, what I call synthetic and real world uh, scenarios. Uh, the synthetic benchmarks are the ones that are uh, like your 3D Mark suite and your Unigen suites. So in 3D Mark you've got your Fire Strike and we also included Time Spy in this one for some of the DirectX 12 uh, type comparisons. And then we have the Unigen suite, which has uh, Heaven and Valley benchmarks. And then the real world scenarios are gaming. Uh, so uh, I tested three games that had built-in benchmarks to keep things consistent. Uh, so we will be looking at Metro Last Light and uh, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, as well as Rise of the Tomb Raider. So for each of these benchmarks, I have attached all the settings that were used onto the results that we will see later on the charts. And we also tested uh, three common resolutions which are 1080p, 1440p, and 2160p or 4K. So yeah, without any further ado, let's jump right into the results and see what we got.
All right, so there you have it. Those are the results. I think they speak pretty well for themselves. This was a pretty sizable upgrade for me and really allowed some decent 4K gaming. Um, I found in most of my uh, scenarios that uh, with some very minor adjustments, I could do 4K gaming at 60 frames per second, which is very minor compromises. Um, I was actually surprised to see how well the 980 Ti still held up in 4K, uh, though you're not going to be getting 60 uh, frames per second near as easily. And one other thing you'll notice too, if you look at the results, especially with the overclocking results, I, like I said, I wasn't able to get the For the Win edition uh, to overclock past that 2100 megahertz. It, most GTX 1080s uh, have a hard time getting past that, um, especially with any of the, the partner cards um, and custom PCBs. But still, I was pretty happy for it, with it. Uh, and the reason I like, again, the reason I like the For the Win Edition card is because of the cooling and the larger PCB. Uh, there's, it's so quiet. I, I don't even hear it at all. Even at 100%, it's not that loud and it's bearable. And I do wear headphones when I game, so I don't really notice the noise very much. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video or found it helpful, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel. And you can use the Amazon affiliate links below or Patreon to uh, support the channel. And if you want to follow, you can follow on Twitter. Uh, that link is also below in the video description. And again, thanks for watching and we will catch you next week.